afternoon. <laughs> hey, everybody. We're going to get started. You guys ready to march? Yeah! All right. Everyone come on around so that you can hear and see. We're really anxious to get started on time, to end on time, and to not get wet. Yeah. So, welcome to the Earth... Can you hear me if I hold it? No, a little louder, louder. Welcome to the Earth Eve Climate March Forward, sponsored by Mothers Out Front. Let's give a hand to Mothers Out Front. I'm with Rochester People's Climate Coalition. I am here to get us started today to introduce our three amazing speakers and to explain some logistics that are important to make sure that the march runs smoothly. So it's the Earth Eve Climate March. It's a really big name, right? Oh, actually, it's even bigger than that. It's the Earth Eve Climate March Forward. It's Earth Eve because tomorrow's Earth Day, and it's the Climate March Forward because we're building on the momentum of the People's Climate March that was 400,000 plus people in New York City in September of 2014. Who was there? Yeah. Oh, awesome. We're also building on the momentum of the local march November of last year here in downtown Rochester in the almost winter when almost 500 people came out to raise awareness. Who was there? All right, awesome, it's a great group. You guys are the climate movement in Rochester and we need to keep moving it forward. We're also building on the moment, momentum of the Paris climate talks that happened in December of last year. Uh, Tomorrow on Earth Day, a hundred plus countries will be going to New York City to sign the agreement, and including the U.S., and we need to keep the pressure on our leaders to let them know that we want to see them act to live up to that agreement. So let's move forward in that way, too. Let's keep doing this. So today, this March, this day, this March, and an event that is going to happen immediately after the march are really the climax of Earth Week. Here in Rochester, Rochester People's Climate Coalition co and our 77 members coordinated a whole week of events. Um, and this is really the climax. The theme of Earth Week this year has been food and agriculture. And the reason for that is because through sustainable farming methods, and making smart choices that each of us can make every time we make every time we take a bite we can actually really make a difference relative to reducing our carbon footprint reducing our greenhouse gas emissions while we're talking about food i just want to thank our food vendors who are here today effortlessly healthy food truck over there and Pudgeville Bakery, the middle tent back there. We realize that this is dinner time. Feel free to, to grab a bite. Uh, and I'll also point out that Pudge Girl is a vegan baker, and we really appreciate that. That's a smart choice. Uh, after you eat, I just want to point out trash and recycling. There are trash and recycling bins throughout the park. Um, the park and the compost bucket. And a compost bucket. Awesome. By the food truck. So you know that anything paper, cardboard, plastic, containers, metal, glass can be recycled. Let's try and minimize the trash and keep the park really clean. For more information about sustainable agriculture and how we can make a difference through our food choices immediately after the march, the Sierra Club is holding its forum on climate and agriculture in that church right there. So tabling starts at 6 o'clock over there, and the main speaker starts at 6.30. And I'm looking at a sign, Farm Workers Matters. The Sierra Club also realizes that everything is interconnected, and they're also working on, relative to agriculture, uh, the, the, right of, the right of farm workers. So one of the panelists will talk about that. So upcoming events relative to Earth Week and beyond, tomorrow at noon at Christ Church on East Avenue, we'll have an Earth Vigil, a silent meditation for Mother Earth. Uh, Saturday night, 
The Fast Forward Film Festival is happening at the George Eastman House, where you'll see local films that are inspiring, put together by local filmmakers. And then looking into May, on May 14th, there's a big event in Albany against the Bakken oil trains, and Rochester People's Climate Co Coalition is sending a bus to Albany. We'd like to fill that bus. There are only 47 seats. It should be pretty easy. Tickets are $40, full fare, $20, subsidized fare, and we're accepting donations in order to subsidize those reduced cost seats. To find out how to do that, you can give me a check or money tonight, or you can go to Rochester People with Climate Coalition's website, which is rochesterclimateaction.org. So again, uh, the march tonight is sponsored by Mothers Out Front. Mothers Out Front is mobilizing for a livable climate. Mothers Out Front mo is mobilizing a mass, creating a mass movement of mothers in Rochester, across the state, in other states too, in order to demand bold climate action by our leaders. So let's see, the, the New York State lead organizer for Mothers Out Front is Neely Kelly. Neely, where are you? <laughs> awesome. Just wanted, just wanted everybody to see who you are. <laughs> Thank you for your hard work, Neely. This woman works 24-7. Um, and who else? Who else here is with Mothers Out Front? Raise your hand. Thank you to all you really hardworking mothers and women who are caring for our earth and making things happen here. We also want to thank Alfred St. John on the steel drum here. Thank you, Alfred. The Mount Hope World Singers, which will be serenading you at the library along the march. Thank you. The March Planning Committee, where are you? Wendy Planning Committee, the other Wendy, Paul. Thank you guys, you did a great job, tons of details. And I could not forget the Raging Grannies. The Raging Grannies. and then singing us back in, right? Okay, great. So while we're here, a couple things to notice. People are walking around with clipboards for things like having you sign up to get information about Mothers Out Front. Um, there are ta so there's the Mothers Out Front table. They also have a petition to sign and letters to sign. The Rochester People's Climate Coalition over there. You can sign up to get our brand new online newsletter that just debuted last week. And there are also these lovely our Rochester People's Climate Coalition t-shirts for sale. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to our amazing speakers. Where's Myra Brown of Spiritus Christi Church? Right behind. Right behind. Come on up, Myra. This is amazing to be here and be part of this rally. As a mother of five children and grandmother of two, as I think about the challenges of climate change, I'm very concerned for the future of our children. Despite the difficulties we face, we can make a difference if we bring our joy, our persistence, and our faith to address this global crisis. Amen? Yeah. As a spiritual leader, I have both an individual and a community moral obligation to act and to rise to this challenge. And that I shall do. Deciding whether I have time for changes in habits and behaviors is no longer an option. That's not an option. Future generations are counting on us. So this is a time to encourage our families and our friends to be more consistent. Consistent with recycling, calling on representatives to act on our behalf, to pay attention to how we're using our natural resources, and to challenge wrong-headed religious theology of domination right. over the earth with humans at the top of the food chain instead of partnering with the very creation that sustains us. Yeah. We need lots of
conversations, conversations at the family dinner table, our recreational events, and at our houses of worship. When I serve dessert, I serve conversation about climate change at my house. This issue is not just important, but critical to the sustainability of our lives as mothers and those we love. We are in a full press, a full press, so we have to keep learning as much as we can from each other and from those who can teach us more. And for me, that has been our Mother Earth community at Spiritus Christi, of whom I'm so grateful for, and Pope Francis, and heroes like all of you. <laughs> at our church, we decided to focus an entire year intentionally on the issue of climate change with the parish to bring our influence to 1,500 people who gather to worship with us each week. That's a lot of people to put a message in front of. And so I call on religious institutions and people of faith everywhere to join in this fight for our lives. And we are in a fight for our lives. Each of us can do something to turn things around. And in the words of St. Francis, when we start by doing what's possible, then suddenly we'll be doing what seems impossible, and that is saving our planet. Wow, thank you, Myra. And next, we have Elizabeth Henderson of Peacework Farm Community Supported Agriculture and of Northeast Organic Farming Association of New York. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you. The first thing I heard about this morning, my friend Susie Pellucci from uh, Irving, Massachusetts, called me up to tell me that the Kinder Morgan Corporation had given up on its contract to put a pipeline through the beautiful farmland of Franklin County, Massachusetts. So that is a real victory. And if we can stop Kinder Morgan, we can stop the rest of them. Of all the work I have done in my life, my most satisfying project was raising my son. And it makes me very happy to see how lovingly and caringly he is raising his son. Now, I want this earth to be healthy so that they will be able to enjoy the bounties of nature free from the contamination caused by a system that values profit over people and the health of the land on which we all depend. For the past 36 years, I have worked as an organic farmer. A central concern of organic farming is healthy soil. And one of the main things that makes soil healthy is a steady supply of carbon from crop residues, from compost, from manures. We focus on building organic matter in the soil and 58% of organic matter is carbon. Nature has provided us humans with a brilliant way to store carbon in the soil green plants. Through photosynthesis, plants transform the energy from the sun and the gases from the atmosphere into carbon. As much as one-third of the surplus carbon dioxide in the atmosphere driving climate change has come from poor land management practices that cause loss of carbon as CO2 from our farms and working lands. To grow food, we have cut down forests, plowed up prairies. Farms are getting bigger and bigger, using industrial methods of tillage, fertilizers like anhydrous ammonia, synthetic nitrogen that feeds plants but breaks down soil carbon, and herbicides like Roundup and atrazine that destroy soil microorganisms. By contrast, beneficial long-term storage of carbon in soils can be achieved by using organic methods, cover crops, rotations, compost, to hold the Earth's temperature rise below two degrees 
It is not enough to reduce emissions by no longer burning fossil fuels. We also have to stock carbon in the soil. Yes. Every one of us can join in this hopeful campaign, and you can do it on any scale. You can build carbon in a planter box on your windowsill, or grow grains and vegetables on hundreds of acres. By taking care of the little bit of land that is in your stewardship, you can increase the carbon in the soil where it does us some good. You can do it in your yard, a community garden, or through buying food from the local organic farmers who are becoming more numerous in our area every year. You can start making a difference today or when you go shopping tomorrow. <laughs> so I invite you all to Peacework Organic Farm for our May Day party and festival Sunday, May 1st from 2 to 6 p.m. If you would like to see a farm that takes carbon from the air and puts it in the soil. Join us in dancing around the maypole. You don't have to know how to dance. Um, it's an ancient ritual to ensure the fertility of the soil. Then we'll walk through the wildflowers of the Cry Preserve, named after Doug Cry. You can meet our new team of draft horses. You can visit the mushrooms of the Abe Johnson, Abe and Noah Johnson Brothers Forest Farm. And you can take a tour of our farm. Reducing emissions from fossil fuels is urgent, but only by restoring carbon to the soil will we keep temperatures from rising above one and a half degrees. So we need all your help. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. And now our final amazing speaker, Mary Lupian. With Mothers Out Front, Mary is head of the City of Rochester Community Organizing Team. Linda. Hi everybody. My name is Mary Lupian. I'm a mother and stepmother to two wonderful little five-year-old girls. And as Linda said, I'm the uh, coordinator for the Rochester City Mothers Out Front. I've been concerned about social justice since I was little. When I was a young adult, I learned about climate change and I was moved to commit myself to the little everyday actions I could control, like turning down the heat, recycling, trying not to waste, the problem of climate change seems so big and so far away, but that's different now. My conversion to activism began when the tsunami hit Asia in December 2004. I was deeply affected by the massive human suffering I saw, and I felt that deep in my heart. Climate change affects me in the same way, as if right now we are standing at the water's edge, watching as the waves recede back into the bowl of the ocean waiting, not knowing what's about to happen. But we do know what is happening. There are so many that are already suffering and dying because of sea level rise, drought, and extreme weather. And in New York, we are already feeling these effects. We are all connected. On November 29th of last year, 500 of us felt like enough was enough, and we marched for climate justice with marchers all around the world on the eve of the Paris Climate Conference. And we were filled with hope and cautious optimism as the 195 world leaders gathered together to solve our climate crisis. Today, we've called Earth Eve, the day before Earth Day. This is the most, argu the arguably the most important Earth Day in our history. And the day when 155 countries will sign the agreement that seeks to keep global temperature rise this century below two degrees Celsius and to drive efforts to limit the temperature increase even further to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Temperature oscillates between two and a half or one and a half and 1.4 degrees currently. We're dangerously close to 1.5 degrees. 2015 was the hottest year on record. And the first three months of this year put us on target for 2016 to be even hotter. 
Thanksgiving and Christmas were t-shirt wearing weather. While many were enjoying the sun and warmth, I did too, I was also terrified inside, imagining the doomsday scenarios and picturing my own children in a new world that I, I don't know what they will have to face. But I refuse to accept this fate for us. Naomi Klein from 350.org says we are left with a stark choice. Allow climate disruption to change everything about our world or change pretty much everything about our economy to avoid that fate. But we need to be very clear. Because of our decades of collective denial, no gradual, incremental options are now available to us. This past election, this election that's going on right now, many have talked about incremental steps to clean energy economy. And as Naomi stated, this is not an option. We must dream big. We must tirely fight and hope a better future for our children, for us, for the human race. We must not contemplate defeat, but visualize our victory over the forces that deter progress. There is so much that we can do to affect change. Like Elizabeth stated, all we have to do is grow an organic garden. We can do those small changes. We can save water. We can keep, turn the heat down. But we also have to think on a bigger level. We need to vote our conscience on climate in every election, local, state, and national. We need changes at every stage of government to make this happen. We are seeing historic participation in electoral politics, and climate change is now a major part of the conversation. We must keep this momentum going. Today, tomorrow, until we, we the people have won the right to a livable climate. We are beyond planting trees and saving Mother Earth. This Earth Day, we will need to stand up and fight for our own survival. Mother Earth will recover, but we will not. Thank you, Mary. Thanks once again. How about just a round of applause for all three of our speakers? Logistics first, though. First, the rule. Um, so the route. The route is really short. It's only about half a mile. So we're going to start at that corner right there behind the RPCC uh, table. Go along Court Street that way to South Avenue. When you get to South Avenue, you're going to cross, cross it, and then cross right again to go up south on the side where the old library is. We're going to stop at the old library where, where there will be some entertainment. And in fact, you're going, to, you're going to basically follow the chance and the entertainment along the route. Um, after the old library, you're going to go up to Broad and come back this way on this side of the street and then back down Clinton to here. On the route, please, please, please pay attention to the police and the volunteer marshals and do what they say. The volunteer marshals are wearing the orange vests and the, the yellow vests like, like Neely has over there. Um, we're o the police will cross you where we have them. We'll only have them on the crossing between here and the old library. After that, we're on our own. So we're going to ask you to cross with the lights, obey the traffic signals, and try and stay together so that we don't interfere with traffic. Timing. We, we want to try and be back here by 6 o'clock, if at all possible, so that those who would like to can go to the Sierra Club Forum on Food and Agriculture. Agriculture and Climate, rather. Next. We're a good number of people here, but we can magnify the effect of this march, both locally and wider, by taking lots of pictures and posting on social media. Please do that. Take pictures of yourself, your friends, the crowd, the signs, post on social media as much as you can. Upon return, the Raging Grannies will lead us in, and hopefully there will be time to go to the forum. Uh, one last announcement, there's another event that might be relevant to some of the folks here. On May 11th at the Little Theater, there will be a donation-only based film on transitioning transportation from cars to bicycles. Okay, are we ready? All right, so we're going to line up behind when... Okay, Raging Grannies, and then you're going to line up behind Wendy there in the orange vest holding up the 
green, the blue and yellow flag and follow her. Thanks, everybody. Have a great time. Oh, and there's, Where's there these pictures are, going? there's signs up here Which for pictures? anybody who needs a taking? sign. The ones I'm taking? Uh, the mother's out front organization. Okay. Why, why do you ask? Warning, warning, so warning. It's time we're reforming our country's great shame. So we'll keep performing our global informing till they stop deforming the earth in our name. The grannies are raging in our town today to sing for the earth in our granny-like way. With humor and hats and with voices raised high, we sing for the planet, the seas, and the sky. The grannies are swarming with warnings of warming. It's time we're reforming our country's great shame. So we'll keep reforming our global informing till they stop deforming the earth in our name. We sing for our children and grandchildren too, and our voices ring out clear and strong with the news. It's time for a change throughout the land. Replace fossil fuels is the granny's demand. The okay. grannies are swarming with warnings of warming. It's time we're reforming our country's great shame. So we'll keep performing our global informing till they stop deforming the earth in our name. Yeah. How are you doing, Peter? Good. Is that it? Ooh, Earth. All right, go Mother Earth. Go Mother Earth.
Yeah, everyone's got two. Give me that one. Give me that one. 